What is up back here with another YouTube video and in case you cannot tell by the title below this video will be a video where I share my uh, thoughts review on Final Battle 2023 if you watched the pay-per-view would love to know what your thoughts are on it down in the comments below there was an hour-long uh, pre-show with a couple of matches uh, and a couple of uh, stuff I wanted to add, including how the hard camera was set up. It was set up facing the stage, which I don't like it. Uh, apparently, they, or at least Ring of Honor when it comes to pay-per-views, they do it uh, looking at the stage because they spend so much money uh, doing it. I'm like, make it face the crowd. Taya uh, Valkyria, Valkyria uh, versus Jasmine Allure. I think that's how you pronounce her. Um opponent's name. Only note I took, or two notes technically I took from this. Taya, uh, she's still being built from uh, Victoria, BC. Super cool to hear that and her uh, winning doesn't really surprise me. Then you had uh, the Von Eriks. I forget what their individual names are, but Ke Kevin Von Eriks, uh, I think it's Kevin or Carrie, which one, everyone is still with us, uh, versus the Outrunners. I like the Outrunners more than what I thought I would. Uh, Von Eriks, uh, I obviously end up winning. Uh, Brian Keith versus uh, Jack Cartwheel winner uh, is the final entrant in the survival of the fittest. Brian Keith won. I want to see more of, he's from either the Dallas area or from Texas huge pop because of that but I want to see more of Jack Cartwheel uh doing stuff and then Tony uh comes out talks about the impact uh the I think it's technically Garland but the again Dallas area has on Ring of Honor was Jay Briscoe versus Brian Danielson at uh, I think it was that he said Final Battle 04, or uh, some event that took place in Dallas 20 years ago. Uh, Br Jay Briscoe's last match was in Arlington, which isn't, I guess, too far away. Never been to Texas, so I have no idea. Uh, and uh, yeah, so talked a little bit about that, and there was one final match. For the pre-show, uh, Daniel Garcia versus Blake Christian in a really good match. Probably my favorite match on the pre-show. Garcia, in a way, obviously uh, wins because it, he's in the Continental Classic. Then backstage, I assume, pre tape thing with Tony Khan. Pretty much sets up Anthony Henry versus Eddie Kingston in a proving ground match where if Anthony Henry lasts, I think it was 10 minutes, or outright wins Eddie Kingston, he'll get a future Ring of Honor World Championship against whoever the champion is after the Continental Classic. First match on the uh, main show was Black uh, Taurus. I think that's how you pronounce his name versus El Hijo del Vikingo for the Triple A or Triple A uh, Mega Championship. Pretty sure Black Taurus wrestles often enough in. I think it's either Demand, Lucha, Lucha Toronto, uh, Lucha Tio, something like that kind of deal because he looks familiar and that would be the only promotion I would think that might book him. Uh, El Hijo del uh, Vikingo tried to get to the top rope twice because Black Taurus was on the outside. Uh, couldn't He could get up to the top rope no problem, just like standing up there, hard thing to do, uh, but eventually... Uh, he hit, I think it was a, a backflip or something like that. Uh, El Hijo uh, del Vikingo was on the post kind of deal. Not on the top turnbuckle, on the post. Um, and then he jumped to the top rope, hit a drop uh, kick on uh, Torres, uh, and then he ended up, uh, del Vikingo, ended up uh, hitting a 630 for the win. Right match, in my opinion, to kick off the show. Uh, definitely high pace. Again, like I said, right match. Then you had the Mongol Embassy, which was Brian Cage, B Bishop Khan, and Toa, Le Toa Leona, uh, with obviously Prince Nana defending the six-man tag team championships against, uh, I think these are uh, the names, Shane Haste, formerly Shane Thorne in WWE, Bad Dude Tito, and I don't want to butcher their tag partner's name, so I won't pronounce it. They show highlights of uh, the TMDK uh, beating Mogul Embassy at a New Japan show. Didn't uh, catch the name of it. I'm not necessarily a big fan of Mogul Embassy or at least these members uh, and I only know really know Shane Haste um, 
from the other team, TMDK, and because of that, wasn't really um, into the match. Mo Glembassy ends up retaining. Then you had one of the matches I was honestly looking forward to uh, the most in the I Quit, Tony uh, Nice versus Ethan Page match. Love Ethan Page's entrance uh, music, I'm not gonna lie, and Mark Sterling was... Uh, he had to be handcuffed to the bottom rope where he wouldn't interfere in the match. He wouldn't do it. Mark Henry comes out. He, I don't know what part of Texas he Texas he's from, but he's from Texas. That's all I know. Uh, he came out, pretty much made Mark Sterling be handcuffed to the top turnbuckle. Don't know exactly when, uh, but at some point, Ethan Page got kind of busted open. A little bit looks like uh, the top, his top left forehead hairline area uh crowd was changing mark you suck uh mark henry went to the back right after being handcuffed making other mark uh being handcuffed so mark sterling uh, looked at the camera and said i don't suck legit laughed at that tony hit a super uh can super hurricane rana uh, on or attempted to make Ethan Page land on uh, two like chairs facing each other. He, um, uh, Ethan Page missed uh, kind of deal. Sign guy, don't know what his actual name was, was front row, but Tony and Nice uh, intimidated Bobby Cruz. Cruz gave him the keys uh, and then Nice unlocked Mark from the ring post. Eventually Scorpio Sky uh, returns uh, to ROH uh, kind of deal. I don't know when the last time um, he was in ROH, off the top of my head. At least crowd seems happy about that. Uh, Paige hit a DDT to Nice on a 45 pound, uh, uh, plate thing like you used to work out. Um, and then Paige wrapped a chain around, uh, the neck of Nice and wins. I've seen better I Quit matches, definitely seen, uh, worse than the most skippable match i would say on the show nyla rose versus vert vixen don't know who vert is don't know why this match is happening nyla won in another match again don't know why it happened outside of a bathroom break in between the, uh, the two matches of the i quit and the survival of the fittest he got the survival of the fittest to crown the new ring of honor uh tv champion uh, it's a single elimination. Everybody has to get eliminated until you got a winner. You had Dalton Castle, uh, Commander, Kyle Fletcher, Lee Johnson, Lee Moriarty, I think that's how you pronounce his last name, uh, and Keith, or not Keith Lee, I apologize. That's a different match uh, versus Brian Keith. And Commander, I wrote notes, but I didn't write too, too many notes. First note, Commander went from one side of the rink to the other. Uh, and did a flip, uh, I, again, I think it was a backflip, I could be wrong, uh, onto Johnson, Castle, uh, Moriarty, everybody uh, but Kyle Fletcher. Uh, kind of deal. That was a cool uh, visual to see. Lee Moriarty made uh, Lee Johnson submit. Crowd uh, was really behind Dalton Castle, right for Lee. So, I think his Ring of Honor slash AEW name is Johnny TV, but John Morrison... Uh, came out, super kicked uh, the boys, uh, which caused a distraction by Dalton Castle, which again, Lee, Mor Lee Moriarty uh, pinned him. Crowd hated that. Uh, Castle getting eliminated. And I would love to see a long-ish match in between Moriarty and Castle at some point. Um, and I went to, I thought that like those eliminations were rather quick, so I figured a couple of minutes uh, I can go... Uh, get some cereal, come back, and during that time period of like two minutes or so, um, Moriarty got pinned. Don't know um, who eliminated him. Uh, Kyle Fletcher pains Brian Keith. Uh, Commander hits a top rope, or goes to the top rope, walks it a uh, few steps, stood there, looked like he was going to lose balance, uh, and hits a 450 to Kyle Fletcher, uh, on who is on the apron. Uh, so many close falls. Uh, closing moments of this match definitely worth checking out. Kyle Fletcher ends up winning, and he's, I think I've seen online, 24 years old. And man, oh man, 
He is so gosh darn good. Then you had Wheeler Yuta versus Filthy Tom Lawler in a pure wrestling rules match for the ROH Pure Championship. First time seeing Tom Lawler uh, wrestle, didn't write really too many notes, tried getting into this match. I could not. Uh, Wheeler Yuta uh, retains and uh, they went for a handshake. Uh, Lee Moriarty uh, said like, yeah, no, uh, thanks, I low blowed him, Hook came out, Wheeler dips out, uh, then comes back in, low blows uh, DDT Hook, and apparently they're having a match for the FTW uh, championship at some point, uh, soon-ish, if I remember right. And we got to the match I personally was looking forward to the most, Keith Lee versus Shane Taylor. And I know like there were other matches other people were looking forward to um, more than this match, but I I've waited like six and a half years uh, or so since 2017 uh, to see a match in between the two men. Did not disappoint. Uh, there was no code of honor uh, for Shane Taylor's family. I think it was his wife and his two small kids uh, were there. So I thought, oh, he, because of that, will win. And then he will also, like, is more in ROH than uh, Keith Lee is. Uh, but I didn't really take too many notes uh, for this match because I was sitting back watching big meaty men doing big beat meaty men uh, uh, chants. Keith is awesome chants. Beat that meat uh, chants and I don't know for sure if highlight of the match but definitely move of the match. Shane Taylor hit a Canadian destroyer from onto Keith Lee. Uh, when Keith was on like the second rope, Shane was on the top rope. I was like, oh sugar honey iced tea. But I did not say sugar honey iced tea if you um get my drift keith lee uh picked up the win to again my surprise because he isn't really in roh as much as shane taylor is then we got the uh match in between uh blackpool combat club uh minus wheeler yuda versus ftr and mark briscoe uh and it's kind of tales of two halves for this match because uh originally was not a fight without honor i thought it was and then uh it was a double count out um for the match probably i don't know exactly how long into the match but 15 minutes uh let's say and it was what you expect for a six-man tag match with the six people involved like i said double count out let them fight chance bobby cruz was going to say yeah sorry but it's a double count out uh no winner uh, uh mark um grabs a mic out of nowhere i don't know for sure word for word what he said but he said no we're not ending this match like that uh to honor mark's brother jay we're gonna do it fight without honor ian rick bonnie said yeah yeah Okay, Tony confirms it's a fight without honor. Let's go do it, boys, uh, kind of deal. And again, a uh, tale of two halves. And uh, I would say I would like the non-fight without honor part more because so much blood uh, in the second half of this match once it went fight without honor uh, kind of deal. Uh, there was like thumbtacks. Uh, being put on tables mark briscoe brought a barbed wire ladder from backstage and like wtf uh kind of deal looking through my fingers um and once it goes to fight without honor not for the weak of heart which i, I can be especially like i said there was a boatload maybe not a boatload of blood but a lot of a lot of blood uh kind of deal and uh yeah it wasn't again looking through my fingers don't know exactly how but ftr and mark uh briscoe win i don't want to say obviously but obviously uh kind of deal we then had the anthony henry eddie kingston match where if uh, a anthony henry won within 10 minutes or lasted 10 minutes with eddie kingston he would get a future roh title s shot and with eddie and the whole championship thing with the continental classic i figured eddie would win within that 10 minutes he did um it i don't know for sure if this makes sense but the match itself was nothing for myself personally but it did one help get eddie kingston on the card as world champion granted it was not for the title and it's a good enough 
what I would call a breather match after the last, like the six-man tag match and the the main event, which was Athena versus Billy Starks uh, for the Ring of Honor Women's Championship. And this one, uh, I know that I said I was looking forward to the Keith Lee Shane Taylor match the most. This one is easily go out of your way to watch it, kind of deal. Like grain at the six-man tag match. If you said that's your favorite cool, I can understand why. Again, I'm not a big fan of blood. Uh, kind of deal. Lexi Nair uh, was the ring announcer, which made me think that she would get involved. She kind of, sort of, somewhat did. Uh, she also mentioned that it was a 60-minute time limit, which is usual for the World Championships. I didn't expect it to go that long because it started at uh, 11.32 Eastern uh, time. Granted, the pay-per-view ended at like 8 minutes after mi midnight. Uh, kind of deal, but again, didn't figure it would go uh, the full length. Must be cool for Athena to main event a uh, pay-per-view again as champion again in her hometown or close to it. No code of honor. Women's wrestling chant within minutes uh, of the match. And this, I don't know for sure how to explain it, but, like, this match feels like a main event. Uh, I didn't write too many uh, notes throughout this match, but Billy uh, uh, Starks got cut open, like, where her hairline top of her forehead hit, uh, was. I don't know for sure, again, when that happened. Uh, Billy hit a suplex from the announcer's table onto the ground, fight forever chance, which... Uh, I like, I agree with, Ref gets knocked out, uh, Athena gets Lexi to give her the belt, uh, Lexi kind of hesitates, Athena grabs the belt, uh, and then um, Billy Starks uh, hit, uh, hits a drop kick, hits her finisher, got a two count, I thought that was it. Then um, Billy Starks hits the electric chair driver on the apron uh i honestly i put this out on twitter wish that i had matches like this growing up because i'm too i don't want to say banged up but history of injuries kind of deal i would not last long uh but who knows what could have been if i seen this 10 15 years ago surprised uh that it went past midnight uh athena won by submission i didn't know what the finisher was called so I didn't write it. Surprised that she won uh, and uh, they, Billy Starks and Athena, kind of mouth off uh, to each other and eventually Athena uh, raises Billy Starks hand and they're back together, the three of them. And I thought, oh, that that's it? Kind of deal? Uh, like I figured that uh, they would shake each other's hand and then go their separate ways. Uh, kind of deal, but again, fantastic main event. Would love to know your thoughts are on Final Battle 2023 down in the comments below. While you are down there, feel free to hit the like, subscribe, turn on post notification. Of course, you don't have to if you don't want to, but it would mean a lot to myself if you did. More importantly, hope you guys are doing okay mentally, emotionally, and physically. The world that we tend to make up is nothing but a fantasy until you wake up. I feel like I'm just lying to myself. Lying to myself, yeah. Cause I just crossed the line like I'm playing offside. I do it how I want and I'ma do it till I die. I feel like I'm just lying to myself. But it's